It's April 8th, and I have been kicked out of the house for exactly one year. I've been living in a garage for one year. Can you believe that? Since the last time I made a recording, I have been living in a garage in Alhambra for exactly 365 days. Now, if we go back one year, I got kicked out. No means, no nothing. And guess what? One year later, I still have nothing. I'm still broke. I'm taking classes. <sighs> Joined two churches, and nobody wants to hire me. Why? Because I'm too smart and I'm too black. <laughs> Which is amazing, because how are you too black? <laughs> in any case, one year anniversary. Yay! I'm living in a garage on the brink of the extinct... Wait a minute. This, this is... Wait. Hold on. You don't take you don't be a good time. Black people, we are in trouble. We're on the brink of extinction. And if you don't believe me, that's okay. You don't have to believe me. I've been living in a garage for a year. So, don't believe me. <laughs> I recently joined two churches, and I'm very disappointed in both of them. Uh, in joining these two churches, there are people in these churches who are definitely influenced by Satan or the devil or whoever you want to call the deceiver, the negative one, the most unclean, this, this entity. And you can tell, they just, they wear the clothes and, you know, the taffeta skirts. So let me tell you, you put on all this makeup and you put on all this stuff and you're doing this for Jesus. You're putting on these cloven hoof goat shoes from Lady Gaga because you're doing this for Jesus. You're putting on a tight dress and showing off your booty <laughs> to the point where he's... <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you, you go in church and it's all high heels and tight pants, <laughs> hairdo and makeup, and you're doing this for Jesus? Really? Because Jesus needs tight pants and hairdos and and all this. Okay, well, first of all, they they want you there because you can spend all the money on them clothes. And and you have a disposable income. I mean, do these do, uh, what what are these churches doing? Do they have a farm? Do they have a they got anything that anybody can turn around and eat? They have a business that people from the clergy or whatever from the congregation come and work to where they can they can make something. Do they have a private school where the children can get taken care of? I mean, are, are, do they have renewable resources that bounce money with back back and forth between that community so that community can grow? You have to bounce the money, at, you know, at least once, twice. It really should be bounced a dozen times in black hands. I mean, if you got a piece of dirt and you're black, you need to pump it up. Stop being a sambo. It's ridiculous. There used to be a, a story uh, called Little Black Sambo. It was a little book, and, and, and I thought it was the greatest thing. Now I find that Sambo's the bad guy, and Uncle Tom's the good guy. Boy, here we are. And church is ridiculous. I, 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 can't, I can't believe how much of a business these churches are. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, meanwhile, while you're making thousands of dollars on the hour, I've been living in a garage for a year. And I've been under under the, the regimen of some people who I don't want to be around for longer than that. So here we are. Trying to find our way out. No, trying. Trying. See, I keep trying. Keep trying. See, that's the problem. I tried. I tried. I really tried. No. I've been busting my ass learning technical stuff that black people aren't supposed to know. Guess what? If I find a black person that's got some machinery, I really actually, I need to find Claude Anderson. That, I'm sorry, I need to find Dr. Claude Anderson. I need to find Mr. Anderson. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit this because I'm going to go, this, this fool is bananas. No, I'm not bananas, I'm just tired of the bull. There's been too much garbage going on. Black people can't even talk. I say, <sighs> speak to black people, they look at me like, whoa, is that fool talking to me? Like, you are black. You're pretty identifiable. And I say, all right now. You'll be looking at me like, why are you saying all right now to me? Okay. You know there's only 35 million. Only 35 million. So if there's only 35 million black people, they can starve us out in a week. 
if they if they had, I'm a, I keep telling people this, and no one responds, and that's fine. There are five million, five million German Luger style weapons in the U.S. in private collections. I'll say it again: five million German Lugers in private collections in the United States. Now, if you take those five million German Lugers, you put ten bullets in them, and go say, hey, let's count one black person for each one of these bullets. That's 50 million black people. There's only 35 million black people in the U.S. So now, one hour, we're wiped out by gunfire. Okay? This morning, on the anniversary of me getting kicked out, April 8th, I saw a Pasadena police officer on a motorcycle with an AR-15. What in the world does a motorcycle cop need with an AR-15? In Pasadena. In, in the most Caucasianist spot up here. On this side of L.A. <laughs> An AR-15. No, what it's for, it's for all us poor blacks. Pacif uh, pacification. See, so when it jumps off, he takes four of them, or uh, I'm sorry, he takes ten of them uh, armor light bullets and goes to light up ten of us. He's done his job. Plus, they got the big, they got, they have the large magazine. We don't call them clips; it's a magazine. <laughs> and that's that's how you know if someone's been in the military. I've been in the military, but I ain't shoot nobody. Why? Because I refuse to murder for these people. Now that I know, man, I would wreck some people's lives. I was naval special warfare training. Man, if I'd have gone over there, I'd have wrecked some lives. I can shoot. A, I can shoot. <laughs> and here's the problem. They don't, I used to be an arms dealer. They made sure they took away from me. So, black people, this is what you need to do. Pull me in and let me teach you what I've learned. Okay? We need to get right. Otherwise, we're going to stink. Between one hour and a week, you choose. That's all it's going to take. I'm going to say it again. Within one hour a week, 35 million black people extinct. The, the black race in America extinct. Now, you can either call to arms and let me help you, or you can die. And I'm, I'm, I'm already in, 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 in Alhambra. I'm already here. I'm dying from, from not having nothing, being around people who don't care about me. So, here's my one-year anniversary. I've been watching everybody go crazy. I've been talking about... Matter of fact, if you go back to 9-11, when 9-11 happened, I was wondering why nobody responded. How did all this happen? Because it was BS from back then. I was, I was out of the military back when that happened. So right when it happened, I'm what is going on? This is BS. There's no way that somebody could have done this without somebody putting it together. Because Andrews Air Force Base is right there. I'm done talking about it. Uh, man, when it happened, I was like, this is BS. There was no way. Okay, wait, I just said I was done talking about it. I'm done talking about it now. Okay, now, black people, this is my I'm, I'm my first video and my last video. The other two videos over there, that's just some garbage for testing. And all I can say is hallelujah, praise God, and stop listening to rock and roll. If you listen to anything but gospel... You're professing Satan, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And yeah, it sounds, ooh, ooh yeah, this guy's crazy. I used to have a, a Sunday school teacher named Mr. Vaughn, and he drew some circles up on the up on the, the blackboard. And, uh, I'm doing it on time. And, and he said, now what's that? He said, it looks like a target. He said, that's sin. I'm like, what? The rock and roll records, sin. And you look at it, now everyone's talking about, oh, rock and roll records are sin, and look at this, and this, and this, and Satan, and all this. Oh, and man, I was deep in it. I used to, I grew up in Colorado on rock and roll. You know, I had to fall down on my knees before the Lord and, and apologize to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Why? Because <laughs> uh, that stuff's coming out of my mouth. And I'm thinking I'm just being wholesome. Uh-uh. I'm, I'm professing the dark side. Didn't even know it. See? So, you think you think you might be... be, be see, you can't talk. <laughs> when you get to the Spirit of the Lord and you can't talk. Because <laughs> he takes over. <laughs> the Spirit of Lord Jesus will take you. <laughs> see, I'm happy. This is the thing. It don't matter if I'm, I'm in a garage freezing my butt off.
<laughs> the Spirit of the Lord will grab you and it'll take you and this and, and it's real. It's real. <laughs> All right, folks, be safe. I I don't need a job. I need to work with some black people who want to survive. Okay. If you don't want to survive, fine. They'll just you know when they ask you, uh, are you a Christian, or you believe in God, say yes. And they'll shoot you, and that'll be that. And make sure you have the Lord in your in your heart before they do. God bless you.